On the Medical Watch for you this afternoon, excessive use of the Internet is reshaping teenage brains. That's according to a new study by researchers at the University College London. Alison Cranick is a licensed counselor with Northwestern Medicine McHenry Hospital. She's an expert on treating children and teens who are experiencing an Internet addiction. Alison, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, first of all, let's clarify what is an addiction and what is a teenager just being a teenager? Sure. So in the U.S., there's not currently a diagnosis for Internet addiction. However, there are several similarities between what we refer to as substance use disorders and the problems we see associated with heavy smartphone use and social media use. So this includes things like cravings to use, unsuccessful attempts to reduce their use, feeling powerless to change their use, and a negative impact on relationships as a result of use. So when you start to see these things, that's when we start to think there might be more of a problem versus teens just being teens. In some regards, it's a bit like alcohol or anything else when it starts affecting other areas of your life. And this study essentially said, much like some other things we get addicted to, it can rewire the brain. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we know that when we overuse things like smartphones and social media, it kind of, it, it gets into our reward system in the brain, which involves this chemical dopamine, which is essentially we do something good, it feels good, and we want more. And this is really problematic for teens, especially preteens, anyone ages 9 to 12, because their brains are not fully developed. Um, really in something we call the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex is responsible for emotion regulation, decision making, and impulse control, to name a few. So because this prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed, and it won't be until age 25, it makes it hard to say no to distractions and easier for this more developed reward system to kind of take over. So as a result, teens will use these smart use social media and smartphones, experience this release of dopamine, and want more without the capabilities to say no or put down the phone. So if somebody comes into your office, a parent with a child, and says, okay, what do we do now? We're seeing this really impacting other areas of their lives. What do you, where do you start? Yeah, so the first thing we typically do is we assess what exactly is going on. I always start by asking about sleep. Usually if someone's overusing smartphones or, or social media, their sleep is is pretty, has been destroyed pretty much. You know, they're up all night, they're, they're not sleeping, or they're sleeping and these notifications going off and off and it's impacting their sleep. Um, we look at changes in appetite. We look at if they're spending quality time with family and friends. And quality time means non-screen time. Mm -hmm. Um, are they invested in school? Are they keeping up with their assignments? Are they getting out of their bedroom, out of their bed, out of the mm. house daily, getting daily exercise? Are they involved in hobbies? So we assess all these things to kind of see where the problem one, lies. One more way that phones are just like any other addiction, you know. Correct. Uh, so, so give us two, three things that, that parents can do now if they fear their child is over addicted to their phone and their internet. Yeah, so the first thing, if your child doesn't have a phone, put it off as long as possible. Um, use a home computer. If they must use social media, have them do it from your account. Eliminate all screens in the bedroom, TVs, iPads, phones, everything. Um, and set limits. We have to teach teens how to be responsible users. Um, we don't let them go drive a car at 12 years old without telling them how to do it or what the dangers are. Um, so if the phone, if social media is available, they'll use it. We can't expect them to be responsible from the get-go. We have to be their guide. Um, and we have to model mm -hmm. the behaviors we want to see at home. Modeling. We have to do yeah. the same thing. That, that's huge. You can't say get off your phone if you're on your phone all the time. Right, exactly. Uh, Allison Cranick from Northwestern Medicine, McHenry, thank you for being with us. We're going to share you. a link to this study on our website, WGNTV.com. Have a great day. You too.